Hey guys, my name is John, and uh, I'm an antique radio hobbyist, and basically that just means that I like to fix up old radios. I'm fairly new at this. I've only been in the hobby for about a year, so I'm still learning uh, things every day. But as I do, as I learn something new, I always wonder, man, I hope somebody has made a video to show me how to do this particular thing or take that particular step, because it, it is, it's all new. When it's new, it helps to... To be taught how to do things. So that's why I try to make these videos just to help if I can. Before we get into today's video which is about tracing uh, using a signal tracer to find problems in a radio I want to talk a little bit about uh, audio uh, frequency range versus uh, radio frequency range. Uh, audio frequency is things that you can hear. For instance when a dog barks he sends so many waves per second through the uh, air and your ear vibrates at the same rate to pick that up. But only up to about 20,000 kilohertz. Above that uh, are waves that we cannot hear. Of course they're in the air all around us. We can't hear them so it's like they're not there really. Uh, so a radio basically is a device that takes those radio frequencies changes them over to an audio frequency and pushes it through a speaker so that we can hear it. In this case we have a schematic which is a 19 mid 50s Zenith uh, All American 5 radio. It has five tubes in it. The four tubes you might have seen across the top are really the brain of the radio. The ear of the radio is like the antenna uh, which is a single strand of wire that picks up all of those hundreds and maybe even thousands of radio frequencies that are being pushed around you all day that you never hear. That little single strand of piece of wire actually picks them all up. Uh, it, enables, you can, uh, it focuses in on a particular frequency by the use of a tuning capacitor, a variable capacitor, which is kind of to the right of the red area. Uh, that tuner actually tunes the antenna to one particular frequency and then that frequency gets sent into the first tube of the circuit, the first circuit of the radio, which is the converter or mixer circuit. You can see the tube there is called the 12BE6, and that's a mixer tube. What does mixing mean? Well, um, basically what happens is the radio frequency is being added to a oscillator uh, frequency, which is being produced by a little device that's right below that first tube. You can see down below it there's an oscillator. That oscillating frequency is being added to the radio frequency that your tuner has selected in order for the rest of the radio to process it um, most efficiently. I'm not going to get into oscillation today, just know that when it comes out of the first tube it's a different type of frequency than radio frequency. Here it's called an intermediate frequency. Now for the purposes of this video um, it's important to understand and for signal tracing in general that each circuit has a tube and each tube has an input and an output. The, the radio frequency is going into pin 7 as you can see here of the first tube, the 12BE6, and it's coming out of pin 5. And uh, technically that's each tube and each circuit's going to work that same way. Each tube's going to have an input, each tube's going to have an output. That's important to remember because we're going to be um, going through with a signal tracer and these are the points that we're going to be checking uh, to look for trouble in a radio. So let's take a look at the um, whole schematic and we're going to look at the path that the radio frequency uh, goes through the radio and how we're going to be checking each circuit with our signal tracer. Okay, so now we're going to look at the front end of the radio system, and, and here we've got the first two circuits, the uh, converter mixer circuit and the intermediate frequency amplifier circuit. Uh, the two tubes are up on the top. You can see um, that pin number 7 on the first tube is the input for that tube, and pin 5 is the output. Uh, it leaves the first tube and goes into the intermediate frequency transformer uh, coil number 1, and goes across that transformer and into tube number 2, the 12VA6, through pin number 1. That's the input there of, of the second tube. And the output of the second tube is again the plate, which is up in the top of the tube, and in this particular tube it's pin 5. And then it leaves uh, the second tube, goes into the second IF transformer coil, uh, as you can see here. 
Okay, now we're going to move along to the third and fourth tubes. As you can see, the third tube is a 12AT6, and this is known as a detector tube. And this is a pretty important tube because uh, this is the tube that changes radio frequency, which we've been working up with until now. And uh, it turns it into an audio, audio frequency, which is a signal capable of driving the speaker in and out to produce sound waves that your ear can hear. So the detector tube is pretty important. It's, remember, the input on this, which we can see on the left of the tube, is the input's actually going into pin 6 as a radio frequency and it's coming out the top plate of the tube, pin 7, as an audio frequency. So our signal tracer is probably going to have two settings. One's for radio frequency and the other's for audio frequency. We'll need to, when we make the change from one side of this tube to the other as we test, we'll need to flip that switch. And then, uh, of course, we can see that the uh, signal continues on uh, through another uh, little group of resistors and capacitors and into the uh, fourth tube, which is the 50C5 tube. And this is a power amplifier tube. Uh, 50C5 is pretty popular in the 40s and 50s, or late 40s and 50s and 60s. It's a, it's a 50 volt. Um, tube. By the way, the first two numbers of every tube tells you what voltage it is. So 50 volts is a pretty high uh, voltage for, a, for an uh, audio amplifier. Anyway, as you can see, the um, signal, which is now an audio signal, is going into pins 2 and 5 of the uh, 50C5 tube and coming out again from the plate up at the top, pin 7. And uh, those are our, our points that we're going to be looking at on the on the uh, amplifier circuit. And then finally we're going to be looking over at the actual speaker circuit and uh, everything that's involved with it. As you can see the signal goes directly to the speaker which also has a field vo uh, coil and a voice coil. So um, basically that's the path that the signal is going to take and uh, let's start by looking at a possible problem just to understand what we can do when we do find a problem with the um, signal tracer. And so moving back to the schematic we can highlight the points now all the input points to each circuit that we're going to test with our signal tracer. Let's suppose that we uh, started with the left um, side the first tube and we connected it to the input here and we got a very faint uh, radio signal coming in off of our antenna. Well, that tells us that our antenna is working fine, and so we're going to move on to the second test point, um, which is the input of tube number two. And let's say that that same signal that we heard before is now a little bit louder, which would be normal, because the first tube uh, ramped it up a little bit, so it would be louder. And so we know that that circuit, the first two circuits, the antenna and the circuit leading up to tube two, are all working fine. But let's say when we get to the third circuit, the detector circuit, all of a sudden that input we've lost the frequency. We, we no longer have the signal coming in from the antenna there. Hmm, what could that mean? Well, obviously it would mean that something between the output of tube number two and the input of tube number three is broken or not working properly. And so what we're going to do is just look at each component that's between those two tubes to figure out which one is bad. Okay, and the obvious answer is simply to check every component in that circuit that is somehow connected to the input of tube 3 because one of them will be bad. And so basically that's signal tracing in a nutshell. It helps you narrow down the circuit uh, that's bad so that you can find the problem fairly quickly, fairly easily and uh, replace whatever bad component that you've got. So now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the base of tubes so that, so that we can figure out the numbering system so that you know which pin on which tube is going to be your input and your output. And so here we have just a typical 7-pin All-American 5 tube miniature, radio, uh, miniature tube uh, base as you're looking at it from underneath the chassis. 
there's always going to be a gap between two of the pins and to the right of that gap when the gap is called the key to the right of the key we're going to have pin one and you read them sequentially clockwise as you're looking at it all the way around to pin seven which will end up being on the left side of the gap and basically that's how you're going to determine which pin is going to be your input for a particular tube and which pin is going to be your output for a particular tube uh, again just by checking the chassis to and the or the schematic which will tell you which is which. So that's pretty much the basics uh, involved around tracing a signal through a radio and part two of this video I'm going to have an actual radio and my signal uh, tracer out and I'm going to go through the physical aspects of doing this. Right for now I hope you I hope I helped somewhat and uh, thanks for visiting my shop. This is John from uh, the area of Cincinnati signing off. <laughs>